What if just beyond this season of turmoil is your best season yet? Kevin Wallace dives into how God can turn any season into a time of blessing in his new book, After This. It's available now to order. Receive your copy today by visiting www.kevinwallace.tv. Stand firm and believe there is an After This. Hey family, Kevin Wallace here from Redemption to the Nations Church. I've got a message for you today that I believe God gave me to bring strength and hope and joy to your journey. I want you to get your heart open. I want you to get ready to receive this word. I don't believe your life's ever gonna be the same again. God's getting ready to take you to a new level. I'll see you at the end of this message and we'll pray together. God bless, enjoy this word. How many love your neighbor? If your neighbor didn't smile when I say that, grab your belongings, take your stuff, and go find a new neighbor. Hallelujah. Ruth chapter 1. I'm kidding. <clears throat> Ruth chapter 1. Thank you, Lord. The 14th verse in the message translation, which I typically am not accustomed to reading from, but there's something in this that grabbed me this week. The Lord just led me right to this, and I, I feel like there's something in this for somebody in this room today, somebody watching online. It simply says in the 14th verse of the first chapter of Ruth, again they cried openly. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth embraced her and held on. Look at somebody tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, Ruth held on yeah 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 that neighbor didn't get it so find another neighbor i was expecting a tad bit more excitement out of someone than that find another neighbor who looks halfway spiritual and say neighbor ruth held on ruth held on ruth held on kevin's gonna hold on Becky's gonna hold on. The Wallace family's gonna hold on. The Hughes family's gonna hold on. The Horvath family's gonna, anybody gonna hold on today? Help us today, Lord, to rightly divide the word of truth and give me the grace to preach from this beautiful text. May the word of God transform our hearts and over these next few moments, may our eyes come open to the revelation of your word. I give you now my mouth to speak through and my heart to speak to, O oh Lord. I am thine, O oh Lord. And I pray today that you would use me for your glory. May Christ be glorified, the church be edified, the devil be terrified in Jesus' precious name. And everybody who loves the Lord said amen. You can be seated in the presence of God. I recognize that I came to this pulpit maybe a year ago from the book of Ruth. And perhaps you were in memory of that message. Maybe you don't even know I preached it. Maybe you forgot about it. Maybe, maybe it didn't touch you at all. That's okay. But this word today comes from the book of Ruth. And Ruth is one of the most beautiful stories in all the Bible. It is told more like a drama and a love story than it is written like a book of the Bible. There are some things strangely absent in the book of Ruth. There are some things going on in the book of Ruth that are uh, very, very telling of the time that Ruth was written in. We are told in the first chapter of Ruth that Ruth was written during the time of Judges that a famine had come to Bethlehem. And Bethlehem, you know, represents the place of bread. It's the favorite place of God. It's the place where God has blessed his people. It is in Bethlehem, Judah, where the word Bethlehem itself means the house of bread. And yet, we discover a problem in the first, first chapter of Ruth that begins to set the context of this entire story. Because the Bible tells us that there was a famine in Bethlehem, Judah. It was the place of bread, and yet there was no barley and no wheat growing in the land. The house of bread had become a breadless house. 
and there was nothing happening in Bethlehem. So the Bible says that a man named Elimelech, married to a woman named Naomi, decided that the famine happening in Bethlehem would push them out of Bethlehem into the land of Moab. And if you know anything about Moab, you know it represents the convenient and often carnal place that seems to satisfy at least temporarily um, the craving and the desire of the people of God. Historically to Israel, this was a place where Israel would run to to find some sort of solace in time of weakness or famine or something going wrong. But the problem is that Moab is a place that is really spiritually barren. And you go there because there's a famine in Bethlehem, but Moab is no place to stay. And she goes to Moab, Naomi goes to Moab with Elimelech, her husband, and and their two uh, sons, and the, their two sons, and the Bible says that when they get to Moab, they've run there because of a famine. When they get to Moab, they come to this place where Elimelech, who is the father, the husband, the provider of the family, he dies. And while they're in Moab, the Bible says that the two sons, Melhan and Chilion, they found wives for themselves. Their names were Ruth and Orpah, and. To Ruth and Orpah, Naomi and this family of Israelites, it's, I want you to see this, this family of Naomi and these Israelites as, as almost um, the church. I don't, I don't want to oversimplify this and, and paint some um, unwarranted prophetic picture, but I can't help but get away from seeing how Naomi becomes sort of a, of a refuge, the connection that Ruth, who was a Moabitess, and Orpah, who was a Moabitess, they have this connection to God through Naomi and through this family. They would have never known God. In Moab, Ruth would have never known God had she not come into contact with Naomi. How many are thankful for the people who help connect you to God? How many are thankful for those little Sunday school teachers and children's workers and people in your church that help connect you to God when you and I, as Moabites, we were away from God, not born in Bethlehem. We didn't know the God of Israel, but somebody loved us enough to connect us to this God, and our lives have never been the same because of those kingdom connections. How many want to be that kind of kingdom connection for somebody? How many want to be the kind of person who can take a Ruth and an Orpah and open up a door for them and help them find the kind of God that you know exists, the kind of God that you know is good, the God that you and I serve that we know uh, is a good God. How many want to be that kind of connection for somebody who doesn't even know who God is? I tell you right now, people may never find God because of my preaching, but they'll find God if you will connect them to the God who found you. You can become an open door for somebody to find this God and know his goodness in your life and in their lives. And the Bible says that Naomi lost her husband. She had her two sons. Her two sons found these two daughters while they were in Moab. Daughters-in-law while they were in Moab. And then something tragic happens. They turn the page of another season and now not only is her husband dead, but her two sons are dead. Her two sons pass away and you can't imagine, I don't know, unless you've lost a husband and two sons or you've lost someone that's very dear to you, you read through Ruth chapter one and you don't uh, feel the pain of loss. But how many know that loss hurts? And, and we've all been experiencing some loss. There, there's been some loss uh, in, in not just in the world, but I'm, I'm watching people who have experienced loss in the church. I'm watching people who love God but have prayed prayers that they didn't feel like God answered the way they prayed them and they feel lost. I, I just want to come today pastorally to, to, to not just reflect but encourage somebody that God is still on the throne and he's still good even when we lose some things and we lose some people. Even when it feels like we've been pushed out of a place of peace and pushed out of the place of bread and we, 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 we've made decisions decisions that have moved us to Moab and it seems like if we turn the page one page after another is another loss of some kind and now Naomi this dear widow is living by herself no husband no sons all she has left is two 
Moabitess daughters-in-law. And she says to them, my life is bitter. You don't want to stay with me. My life is bitter and I'm going to go live my bitter life and I'm going to release you from the obligation of staying connected to me and I want you to go find your own God and do your own thing and, 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 and do your own life. There's the temptation sometimes. This is what I want to get to today. There's a temptation sometimes to find the exit ramp of covenant and break out of covenant with something that you've come into covenant with. When things get hard and when times get tough and when the heat gets turned up and when it feels like page after page is one challenge after another and one bad report after another and one setback after another and we move from one variant to another variant and we wake up one day and there's another variant and you just keep turning the page and you just start wondering does this mess ever stop and does it ever turn around does joy ever really break out does peace ever really return do you really experience this goodness of God pastor that you preach about every, every Sunday and the, watch it comes this moment where Naomi gives Orpah and Ruth they're Moabite, her Moabitess daughters-in-law. She gives them an exit ramp. You can get out of this and walk away. And Orpah kisses her mother-in-law. That person that represents the connection to God. It's almost like Orpah is saying, I've had enough of this. I've had enough of this God of Naomi, I've had enough of this loss. I've had enough of this lifestyle. I've had enough of this. That's what Naomi said. Don't call me Naomi anymore. Call me Mara. Because life has become bitter. And when life seems to become bitter, it's like the world and, 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 and life will present an exit ramp for you to decide, I ain't doing this anymore. I'm over this. I'm over this setback thing. I'm over these challenges. I'm over this stuff. I'm over this. But I'm over this. I'm over being connected to Naomi. I'm over being connected to the God of Naomi. I'm over going to church. I'm over this. I'm over paying my tithes. I'm over reading my Bible. I know pastor said 100 days, but I tried it seven days and hell broke loose. And I'm over this. I'm looking for an exit ramp. I don't, I don't know if I can keep going through this. I, I, I think I'm just going to disconnect and I'm going to run away. And I'm going to... And that's exactly what Naomi gave them an opportunity to do. And she looked at Orpah and she looked at Ruth and she said, go away. Go do your own thing. And Orpah cried and Orpah kissed her and Orpah left. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's some believers in the kingdom of God. And I pray that, 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 that if you're in this room today, God is about to change your mind. You love God enough to kiss him. You love God enough to cry when he touches your heart. But you haven't made up your mind that you're going to stick with him. And I want to tell you today that an Orpah spirit is being broken off the people of God because God is about to look for some Moabitesses, some people who came out of rough places, some people who came out of challenging circumstances, some people who survived some family drama. God is looking for some Ruth who say, I'm not just going to stick to you when the going is well. I'm going to stick with you. And, and the Bible said, Ruth held on. My God, those words jumped up off the pages at me. This week I was reading in Ruth and the Lord said to me, Ruth held on. And I want to tell somebody in this room, you are about to be glad you held on. You are about to be thankful that you held on to Ruth or you held on to Naomi. You held on to the kingdom. You held on to God. You held on to the church. I'm going to preach for a minute about all these people who think it's in order to bash the church, disconnect from the church, hate on the church. You better be careful what you say about the bride of Christ. It's his wife and it's not yours. It's his body. It's his people. There's some messed up people in the church, but I want to remind you, the church is where I found the Lord. The church is where I was called to preach. The church is what welcomed me in when nobody else wanted me. We need the church. We need the church of the living God in this hour more than any other hour. We need the power of God moving among God's people. We need to, we need to thank God for the church. We need to stay connected. There's a lot of people who find it very opportunistic right now to take the exit ramp. 
There's a lot of church shopping going on right now. We shop for church like we shop for gowns and pajamas. And we like, we go, we go one place one week and oh, that was great. And, and then this was great. Go there the next week. That wasn't our favorite. So we're gonna keep shopping. You've been shopping two years and still hadn't found. I'm telling you right now, you need to get connected and stay connected to the thing that is trying to introduce you to the God of your salvation. Don't take the exit ramp. Don't say I'm checking out. Don't say I'm done. You're about to be glad you held on. Ruth held on. Orpah said goodbye. Ruth held on. Anybody remember some seasons in your life where you felt like saying goodbye? But you held on. You're about to be glad you held on. The first chapter of Ruth is one of the most Horrible, difficult chapters in the Bible. A lot of loss, a lot of death, a lot of sadness, a lot of crying, a lot of tears. But Orpah disconnected from Naomi and you never hear about her again. But if you flip from chapter one to chapter two, I read chapter one and I thought, Ruth held on, so what, God? Ruth held on. And the first verse of the second chapter starts like this. Lord, I'm about to bless myself. And Elimelech had a kinsman who was wealthy and owned land. I want to tell you what you're holding on to is connected. And what you're holding on to is about to connect you to stuff that if you disconnect from the one you're holding on to, you'll never see what the end of this thing might be. God, I feel this. Look at somebody, tell them, just hold on. Some of you today, that's what the word said. It said that she clung to Naomi. It's a sign of endearment and affection. It's, a, it's an indication. She literally grabbed her and fell on her and said, I will not let you go. I will not let you go. I don't know enough about it yet, but I know this, that the God you serve has been faithful and your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. Wherever you go, I'll go, and wherever you die, that's where I'll die. I don't know about you, but somebody in this room needs to make up your mind today that wherever God takes you and whatever God does in your life, you're going to remain in the kingdom of God because God's kingdom, it's, listen, we've been through some challenges, you've been through some trials, you went through some stuff, but at the end of the day, there's no other place I'd rather be than the kingdom of God. And I'm going to hold on. And he held on, and she held on. And the second chapter opens up, and if you have that back there, I just wanna walk through this for a minute and get this off my mind, and then I'm gonna go take my seat. But put that first verse of the second chapter on there for me. Open your Bible, let's just read the Bible together here today. The Bible says in the first verse of the second chapter, yes, it happened that Naomi, it just so happened. It so happened that Naomi, the one Ruth was connected to, had a relative by marriage. You'll never get what God's about to do in your life unless you have some intimacy with God. A man, a prominent and rich man, connected with Elimelech's family, his name was Boaz. I want you to see this. She is, con Ruth is only connected to Naomi because she loves Naomi. 
Ruth is only connected to Naomi because she's a person of covenant. Ruth is only connected to Naomi for the purest intentions. She wants the God of Naomi. She wants to be a part of the people that Naomi come from. She's learned about the Israel God and she wants to serve that God. She does not know that her desire to stay connected to Naomi is about to change her life. I feel like God has been separating some things in this hour and we're finding out who followed God for the cars and who followed God for the houses and we're finding out who followed God for the social media influence and we're finding out who followed God for the toys and we're finding out who followed God with impure motives because as long as he gives me what I want and he's my sugar daddy Aladdin in the sky I'll stay connected to him but the first chapter of pain and the first moment of disconnection and the first opportunity to take an exit ramp we're out of here we're like the people who the seed was sown on and the and the and it was so shallow that the sun came up and burned it up immediately and they checked out on God and they said I'm not going to follow God anymore but there's some people in here who do not have an orpa spirit you are not looking for an exit ramp you have come too far to turn back now I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now I'm going to make it to heaven somehow I want to tell somebody in this I feel an old fat if you're wondering if I preach like this every Sunday not every Sunday but when I feel like preaching like this don't get in my way let me preach like I like to preach for just a moment God has given somebody a root spirit and somebody's about to make up their mind I'm not connected to you Naomi because of what you got I don't even know what you have I'm not connected to you because of the bank account I'm not connected to you because of what you're giving me I'm connected to you because you led me out of darkness and you brought me into a new way of living and I don't want to leave it I've tasted and seen that the Lord is good and I don't want to turn my back now I'm going to cling to you slap somebody say Ruth held on Ruth held on Ruth held on and I'm not even trying to hate on Orpah because Naomi said, go ahead and leave. She gave her an opportunity to leave. But the blessing is not for those who have an opportunity and leave and leave. The blessing is for the, I wish I could have some help right here. The blessing is for those who stick with it. When Elisha went to Elijah, he said, what do you want me to do for you? He said, I want you to give me a double portion of your anointing. Don't miss this. And Elijah looked back at the protege and said, you've asked a hard thing. But if you see me when I leave, God will give you what you asked for. What he was really saying is, you're getting ready to walk through some stuff and you're getting ready to go through some trials and you're, I feel the Holy Ghost on me right now and you're getting ready to go through some pain but if you can walk through the pain if you can walk through the setback people are going to hate on you the sons of the prophets are going to talk about you but if you'll stick with me to the end I'll make sure that God does what he told you he wanted you to do and you'll get a double portion look at somebody tell them hold on Somebody got to hold on to Jesus when you have an exit ramp and every reason to get out of the church, every reason to go off and get bitter, every reason to go off and blame God and, and charge God foolishly. It's when you say, I'm going to hold on to you that God says in the second chapter of your life, I've got somebody connected to me that I'm getting ready to connect with you and you're getting ready to see if you love me when hell breaks loose. I'll bless you and make you the head and not the tail. I'll bless you and make you above and not beneath. Somebody shout yeah. I feel like somebody's about to be thankful you're holding on to God. I feel like somebody's about to say thank you Lord that I didn't give up when I lost it all. Thank you that I didn't quit when I should have thrown in the towel. Thank you that he who has begun a good work in me will be faithful to finish. Ruth. Held on. Oh, my Shia. Ruth held on. What does holding on look like, Pastor? Holding on looks like many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, 
the Lord delivers them out. I'm looking over here and I see Sister Christine and I look back here every Sunday. Oh, you're my side. And I see Andrew over here crying. And you people watching on television don't even know anything about this. But I remember walking into that hospital room so many times and they said, it don't look good. It don't look like she's gonna make it. And Andrew kept on telling me she's gonna make it. She's gonna make it. He never got bitter and he never lost faith. And she's sitting in here with her hair all beautiful this morning and Arge tried to take her out. But God, God, I feel my help coming on me this morning. I see some other people in here. I see Brother Dwayne sitting back there. He almost died in the hospital. Then he had to come to church with the oxygen machine on. But this morning he's clapping and he's got victory because God is going to bless those that hold on. Got to hold on. So she held on. And when you hold on, you go to the second chapter. Calm down, saints. And when you turn to the second chapter, the second chapter says, put it back up there, please. The first verse. It says, and there was this, it so happened, I love it. That thing keeps jumping off the screen at me. It just so happened that Naomi had a relative by intimacy through marriage. A man prominent and rich connected with Elimelech's family. His name was Boaz. Go to the next verse. Let me just walk through this. And one day, Ruth, the Moabite foreigner, said to Naomi, I'm going to work. Well, that'll preach right there. I ain't waiting. I'm going to work. And I'm going to go out to glean among the sheaves following after some harvester who might treat me kindly. And I was reading this this week and it, and it jumped off at me that she was going out after the reapers had reaped. Don't miss this. Reapers had already reaped and harvest time was already through. But Ruth had enough faith to believe somebody's gonna leave me a leftover. And I came to talk to somebody who holds on to God. And you got enough faith to say, God, even after the reaping is over, I feel like you're still gonna do something to bless my life. The reapers have already had their way in the field. They've already got the best. I'll show up and take what's left over. And Ruth was coming for some leftovers. If you know anything about reaping, you know that the reapers got the best and whatever was left was just the leftovers that she was going to try to gather and live off of. But what I want you to see is that because she stayed connected to Naomi, she wound up in this field after the reapers had reaped. And after the reapers had reaped, there was a man named Boaz who on the field she happened to stumble in. Oh my God. I want to tell you of all the places she could have stumbled, she stumbled into the field that was about to bring her a breakthrough and a new level of living. And I feel like God told me to tell somebody that you didn't just accidentally stumble in here, but God in his goodness has ordered the steps of the righteous and somebody's in this house today feeling like you came to find the leftovers after life gave you a hard deal after everybody else reaped their harvest you showed up today and said Lord is there anything left over but I want to tell you you did not walk into a field of leftovers you walked into a field of divine connection God is about to send a Boaz to every roof in this house and you are about to see that because you held on God held something up for you it can't get away from you you can't escape it you can't get out of it goodness and mercy are following you all the days of your life I'm closing in a minute but I'm gonna finish this She got out there in the field 
And when she got in that field, she was grabbing the leftovers. And while she was taking the leftovers, Boaz walked out and said to the reapers, who is this young lady? Boaz, the, she came out looking for a reaper, but she found a redeemer. Oh yes. She came out chasing after a reaper, but she found a redeemer. Uh -huh. Some of you came looking for a reaper to follow, but God's not going to let you be satisfied with a reaper. God's about to reveal a redeemer to somebody hungry in this house. She, she's out here harvesting the leftovers. And Boaz says, who is this woman? Go to that third verse for me. Who is this young woman and where did she come from? Next verse, the foreman said, why? That's the Moabitess, the one who came with Naomi from the country of Moab. She came out of Moab into Bethlehem. She asked permission, said this farmer. Let me glean, she said, and gather among the sheaves following after your harvesters. She's been steady at it ever since from early morning until now without even having so much as a break. Next verse. Boaz spoke to Ruth. <laughs> I want to tell you two things God's doing in this moment. First of all, God is talking to other people about you. Yes, I said it. God is putting your name in divine conversations. Y'all better receive this thing. The Lord is having conversations with people about what he wants to do in your life through divine connections. Boaz was talking to the reapers about Ruth and then Boaz starts talking to Ruth. Listen, my daughter, from now on, don't go to any other field to glean. Stay right here in this one. Stay close to my young women. Watch where they are harvesting and follow them. And don't worry about anything. See, first of all, God gave, Boaz gave Ruth a place. But the second thing he promised her is protection. He said, this field is the one I want you to stay in. And I know you're single, and I know you're uncovered, and I know you don't have any family here, and I know you're a, you're a Moabitess young woman, and I know that they usually take advantage of, of, of young ladies like you, but I want you to know I'm protecting you, and I told these jokers not to put a hand on you. How many know that you need to learn how to reap with confidence? Y'all better hear what I'm telling you right now. I said, you learn how to live in that field you're living in in confidence. Quit wondering about what might sneak up on you on your back and overtake you. Boaz told the thief, stay away. Boaz told the young men, don't touch her. She's protected. She belongs to me. Keep your hands off of her. How many are thankful that God told some stuff it can't touch you? It can't put its hands on your life. It can't come against you. Some of you wondered how you made it this long. I'll tell you, there was a God that was watching over you in your field and there was somebody that would have taken advantage of you but it didn't work because God protected you. And he is a protector. We sang that this morning. He is a protector. The defender of our hearts. I tell you sometimes we praise God for what he did so that we know he did. But sometimes I believe it's in order to praise God for what he does we don't even know he keeps from us. How many know there's some things you see that God did for you? You have a beautiful family, you got a beautiful house, you got a beautiful car, you got a beautiful job, you got a beautiful life, and you're thankful for all the things he's done that you can see. But I woke up one night and started praising God for stuff he did for me that he never even showed me he did. Stuff that had my number, but God said, nope, not now, not never. You'll never be able to do that to him. He belongs to me. Boaz gave her a place. This is your field. And then he gave her protection. 
And he said, don't worry about the one thing. I've given orders to my servants not to harass you. They're not going to say anything to you. When you get thirsty, because <laughs> he'll give you a place, he'll give you protection, and he'll give you provision. When you get thirsty, look at somebody tell them when you get thirsty. When you get thirsty. Because listen, people with a work ethic sometimes are going to get thirsty. All these people, all the time, oh, you need to take, you need to take so many rests a year. Let me tell you something. Rest is in order. Vacation is necessary. I believe in respite. But we're going to rest like they're talking about in heaven. Right now, people are dying and going to hell. And we got some work to do for the kingdom of God. I know I can't get no amens on that because we're raising a, a limp-wristed church that believes every three weeks you need to take a four-week break. And we don't even have devils because we don't cast them out and we don't deal with the problems. We tell everybody it's chicken soup for the Christian soul and two tulips and roses and peanut butter and jelly. But there's people whose lives are falling apart. And when you get into the, involved in the life of people whose lives are falling apart, yes, you need rest. But sometimes you need to put your armor on and rest. Run the devil out of people's lives and see victory come for the glory of God. When you get thirsty, because when you're working for the Lord, you're going to get thirsty. I get thirsty. Oh, can I be real with you? Sometimes I get thirsty. When you work for the Lord, you get thirsty. And sometimes when you walk with God, you get thirsty spiritually. Can I tell you this? He has a drink for you. You don't have to thirst when you are in the land of the Redeemer. He has promised you water. So she has a place. She has been given protection. She has the promise of provision. Go to the next verse. She dropped to her knees, bowed her face to the ground, and said, how does this happen that you should pick me? And how many are thankful he picked you? He, he picked the Moabite. Now this freaks me out. I would understand if he picked one of the Israelites, but he picked the Moabite. I'm trying to find some Moabites here. Where's the Moabites at? Where are the people who came from Moab with dirt under their fingernails and their hair is scraggly and they, and they look like they came from a place of lack and a place of mess. Yeah, I don't know what it was about Ruth, but there was something about Ruth even in her Moabitess messed up state that still drew Boaz in her direction. Can I thank God right now? Maybe I'm the only one who needs to thank him. But can I thank God right now for the time he could have picked somebody and should have picked somebody else. But by grace you are saved through faith that not of yourself it is the gift of God which is eternal life. Not of works lest any man should boast for we are his work. I'm in Ephesians chapter 2 by the way. All you Bible quoters who need some Bible I'm giving it to you right now. Hope you're catching what I'm laying down. You didn't get saved by your own works. You didn't choose God. Forrest Gump told you that. They looked at Forrest and said, Forrest, have you found Jesus? Forrest said, I didn't even know I was supposed to be looking for him. I'm telling you, I wasn't even looking for him, but I'm thankful for the day he came and found me. Anybody thankful that he chose you and he picked you? I came to talk to some Moabites and to some Moabites in the room. Some people who came out of Moab and the dirt of Moab was under your fingernails and the mess of Moab was on your life and you were a wreck and you were a wretch and you had nothing to offer God you showed up late to keep the leftovers and God saw you in the field and you clung to Naomi and you decided you were going to go on with God and God said that's who I'm looking for and he chose her and she's overwhelmed by it she said why would you choose me why have you treated me so kindly? For I am a foreigner. I am a foreigner. Okay. Let me break this to all y'all. 
you are foreigners. I see people getting offended. Paul said it this way, we were all aliens to the commonwealth of Israel. I had nothing in my bloodline when I was born through Eddie and Gail that gave me claim to the kingdom of God. I was a distant foreigner. But he brought me near to his kingdom by his grace and his mercy. So I'm going to quote it for you one more time. By grace, you are saved through faith. That not of yourself, it is the gift of God which is eternal life. Not of works, lest any man or woman should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus, who before the foundation of the world were created and predestined to do good works. This is why we praise God. Because we went from foreigners and those who were on the outside to being chosen by God. The next time somebody looks at you and says, who do you think you are? Look at your watch and say, how much time do you have? I am not here today because of my wherewithal to choose God. You are not alive and well and saved today because you are alive enough to ch You were chosen by God and said yes to him. And so she is overwhelmed. Where are the people who are thankful and recognize that he chose us? I'm through with this. Go to the next verse. Boaz answered her and said, I've heard all about you. I heard about the way you treated your mother-in-law after the death of her husband, how you left your father and mother and the land of your birth and could come to among a, a bunch of total strangers, God reward you well for what you've done and with generous bonus besides from God to whom you've come seeking protection under his wings. Don't miss it. She did not come seeking stuff. She came seeking a life under his wings. I pray to God that we never get the stuff confused with the creator. I am nervous about the theology floating around in a lot of internet preaching personalities. Y'all can get mad at me if you want. You should be grateful I don't call names, but I'm gonna tell you this. I get real nervous when all I hear is about, we in January, you getting ready to get double for all your troubles, stop. Now, God will double for your trouble, but for, for all these people who don't make changes and yet won't double, keep living crazy, and you think God's going to just magically poof? This is foolishness. You want to change your trajectory, change your habits. You want to change your year, change what you're doing. And somebody that promises you, you give me a $500 seed, God's going to wipe all this mess. Keep your $500 and get in the Bible. I'm telling you right now, we better be real careful with what's floating around because there's a lot. And I understand. And, and listen, I, I, I'm, I'm, I don't even know this whole thing about prosperity gospel. I, I, you can't find it in the Bible. But here's what I want to tell you. God will prosper those whose priorities are in order. But God will thoroughly purge your priorities to ensure that you are following him for the covering of his wings rather than the cash he might put in your pocket. And some people only follow God if he'll load them down and throw it on them. But God is looking for some people who hold on to him when they don't have anything else to hold on to. And if you can't relate to this because your life is tulips and roses, I celebrate that. Put this one in the file cabinet for a day in your life when you need to be reminded to hold on 
Ruth held on. I don't know what happened to Orpah. The Bible never speaks of her again, but I know what happened with Ruth. God took a Moabitess and put her in the family tree of the Savior. Hallelujah! I'm through with this. She came seeking protection under the wings of God. Look at the last verse, verse 13. Oh, sir, such grace and kindness. I don't deserve it. You've touched my heart, treated me like one of your own, and I don't even belong here. Uh, go to the next verse. It's, it's in here somewhere. I'm going to keep reading until I find what I'm looking for. At the lunch break, Boaz said to her, come over here, eat some bread, dip it in the wine. She joined the harvesters. Boaz passed the roasted grain to her. She ate her fill. She ate her fill and had some. She went looking for someone else's leftovers. But God filled her to such a place that he gave her her own leftovers. Verse 15, I'm not going to do this. When she got up to go back to work, Bo, this is where I came. Oh, yes, thank you, Father. Boaz ordered his servants, let her glean where there's still plenty of grain on the ground. Make it easy for her. Better yet, pull some of the good stuff out and leave it for her to glean. Give her special treatment. Ah! Get by my side. Oh, I thank you for the joy in my soul right now, Lord. Somebody's about to be glad they held on to God. Because if you hold on to God, I'm telling you, if you hold on to your faith in God, special treatment. God will give you special. Some of y'all can't understand this, and religion won't let you believe this, but there's enough people in here who can give a witness to what I'm saying right now. God will treat you special. Anybody God ever treated special? Don't be ashamed of it. There's some stuff that's come into your life you cannot explain. You knew it had to be the goodness of God. And if you don't praise him for it, he might not ever give it back to you. But if you'll be recognizing that it came from God and thank the one that did it, God can trust you with another season of special treatment. One translation said, Boaz looked at the, I'm closing, Bo, for the fifth time. Boaz looked at the harvesters and said, leave her some handfuls on purpose. He said, when she gets out in the field, she's been working too hard. I don't want her to have to work hard anymore. In fact, while you're working hard, I want you to reap some and throw her some of what you reaped so that when she comes behind you, she don't even have to search for it. She picks up something somebody else planted and reaped. God's about to let somebody who wanted Jesus find that if you get Jesus, he'll open up the treasury of the kingdom of God and he'll give you handfuls on purpose. He'll bless your marriage on purpose. He'll bless your children on purpose. He'll bless your business on purpose. He'll bless your prayer life on purpose. He'll bless your house on purpose. Everybody in your family tree will come into the blessing of God. You worked for it. You sweated over it. You tried to make it happen. And God saw the content of your character and what was in your heart. He saw your tears when nobody else did. When everybody else left Naomi, he saw that you held on. And God sent me to tell you, Boaz is about to leave you some handfuls on purpose. Shout all over the church. Handfuls on purpose. I believe Ruth, walk, stand with me, I'm through. I believe Ruth walked through that field and started seeing bundles and loads of barley and wheat and said, wait a minute, this is too easy. Now don't get mad at her for the season of special treatment. Because you got to remember, there was a season where the Bible says she didn't even rest. She worked hard from daylight till dusk. But I'm going to tell you, after, somebody say after. After you've warred for a while. And after you go through a season of, 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 of warfare. And you go through a season of working and a season of trial. God will shift your season. 
just like that she went from working hard to barely working she i said she went from working hard to hardly working that somebody else did the labor and all she did was do the reaping and kept on giving boaz and god thanks i want you to hear me say this to you today somebody's got to learn how to transition out of the season of heavy work and labor and come into a season of rest and special treatment Special dream. I'm going to close with this. I remember we took a vacation and I don't know about y'all, but when I go on vacation, I love to get a massage. I mean, I want somebody to do karate chop my back, take a ball back, bam, beat the stress out. Come on, just get me all loose. I just, so Devin and I went and got a couple's massage. And we were down in, uh, where'd we go? Aruba. Aruba. We're down in Aruba. Oh, Lord. And we went to this place, and, and we wanted to relax. And we're on jet skis and doing all this stuff out in the ocean. Me and Gary go 50 feet under the water, and he's over there praying in the Holy Ghost. And I'm trying to survive with this scuba gear on my head. And I'm, I'm looking for him as dark sharks and everything and sea monsters. And oh God, I came to see the sun. Father, get me up out of here. And I came up out of there. I said, this ain't vacation. I need something, some special treatment. I need some special treatment. So I'm, I'm walking around there. Lord God, he brought me out of the deep place. Lord, thank you. He, he saved my soul. Oh God, I was repenting of things I had done in 20 years. Father, forgive me. Cleanse me. He saved me. I came up. I said, I need some special treatment. And I came over. I said, oh, Devin, look. They got this sign at this little place where we rented these things. It said, massages. Let's go get a massage. So we go up there and get, we're getting a couple's massage and Dev's over here. This, and this woman comes out and she's this little bitty thing. I said, I'm a big guy. She's not going to be able to get this tension and stress out of my neck. She looked at me and she said, I give you special treatment. I said, no, this ain't going to work. This woman ain't strong enough to give me what I need. I am telling you, this young lady took her elbow. She took these instruments, and she started driving down. And all of a sudden, I felt angels come. I'm telling you, I felt weight lift. She said, how does that feel? I said, "Woo! I'm feeling like I'm on vacation now. I, she said, this is not for everybody. This is special treatment. I'm telling you, God is getting ready to give somebody some special treatment. Everybody else got the same massage. Everybody else got the same treatment. But we're coming into a season for some people who sweated in a field, cried when you lost some loved ones, cried when you lost some best friends. I feel the Lord on me right now. God is getting ready to leave you some handfuls on purpose. And it's not because you went seeking the stuff. You just wanted to live a life covered in the shadow of the wings of God. Lift your hands all over this room right now. Give him praise for his faithfulness in your life. Just, just with your hands up. Just with your hands up. Just play something there for me, Seth, if you don't mind. I feel like we need to have an opportunity of thanks. An opportunity of thanksgiving. We've been through some challenging seasons here recently. I can't promise you we're not going to see more challenges in our future. But I can promise you for those who are prioritizing their life to live under the shadow of his wings. For those who will hold on. Listen, I believe that God is speaking to hearts right now. If you've watched this message today and something said brought strength to you and built you up in your spirit, gave you hope for tomorrow, I thank God that in this day and hour that we're living that there is a word from the Lord. And the Bible tells us we don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We need the word of the Lord. And today this word, I pray, has produced faith in your heart. You want someone to agree with you in prayer right now. I want to take this moment to pray with everyone watching. 
because I believe God's going to meet needs today. If you're lost and you feel like you're full of hopelessness and sin, just call on the name of the Lord. If you're sick in your body and you need him to touch you, you just call on the name of the Lord. If your family's falling apart and you need God to rescue your family, I want you to know there's a miracle for your family, for those of you who are watching today. Let's pray together. Father, move by your spirit right now. Someone's reaching out to you in faith, God. They need a miracle today. They need you to turn their situation around. I thank you that there's no impossibility. There's no problem too hard for you to solve. There's no mountain too big for you to move, Lord. Do it for them today. We agree together in prayer in Jesus' name that lives are being changed right now by the power of God. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you. Be blessed. Check us out on kevinwallace.tv, and I'll see you next week. God bless you.